Good morning, everyone. It's such an exciting day today. A lot, a lot to do. A little bit nervous. So much to get through. But it's a big day for the church, and it's a big day for our church. It's Pentecost Sunday, which is traditionally a time for people who have been preparing for baptism to go through their baptism ceremonies. It's a traditional time for confirmation, and we're doing all those things today. So it's very exciting. We still Sorry we're a bit late starting. We have some technical issues. For those at home probably can't hear me all that well yet, but our crack team are working on it. We're going to make some noise in here though. We start each Sunday with two songs. We really get ourselves warmed up. Uh, some of our confirmees are going to p- take part in pretty much all the parts of the service today. Uh, and that includes, that includes singing? Yeah. All right. Let's get started with our first two songs. Welcome this morning.
Kindle in them the fire of your love. Amen. I'm going to go off script all the way through this service because there's so many exciting things to tell you. The first of which is that the Confirmees had a big hand in picking what songs we sang today as well. So they're some of their favourites. But now we kind of focus and gather ourselves as God gathers us here. So we gather in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to join in our confession. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, I confess that I have sinned against you, not only in my words and actions, but also in my secret thoughts and desires, which I cannot fully know or understand, but which you know completely. I am sorry that I have displeased you and repent of the evil I have done. For the sake of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, have mercy on me, Forgive my sins and graciously help me in my weakness. Amen. God has shown us amazing love. Through the blood of Christ, he has forgiven us and through the power of the Holy Spirit, led us to repent. Therefore, by the authority Jesus has given his church, I as a called and ordained servant of the word declare to you that all your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace Peace be with you. you. Amen. Amen. Now's the bit we've been looking forward to. I'm not going to ask the confirmees to get up first because we've got some stage managing to do. It's so blessed here that we have a group that uh, leads confirmation. Most weeks they haven't needed me. It's great. They organise it between them and uh, we share it together. So I'm going to ask Cameron Brewer to come forward. Amy Johnson, who is our youth ministry coordinator who doesn't have to do confirmation, she does it volunteers because she loves it, come up here with me, and Lois Strand as well. And we also have Keith Peltz, and he can't be here today, um, who is a member of our confirmation team. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is ask Murray Paschke, who is our, we used to call him head elder, but we don't have elders anymore, we have pastoral assistants. Murray's going to come forward and he's going to stand up here. And then right where they are, just for now, we're going to get the confirmees to stand up, just right there at this point. I present these young children, young people, Charlie, Will, Dylan, Matthew, Ben, Emma, Rachel and Laura for the right of confirmation. Friends in Christ, our Lord says, everyone who acknowledges me before others I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Seven of the confirmees to be seated. You guys come over this way. And Ben's going to come and stand here with us. I need to be on this side of you. That sound, if that may, that's up to them to fix, don't worry. Um, before Cameron says what he has to, and we start with baptism, as I said, there's so much to tell you about what has happened uh, and why, what brings us to where we are. And um, after we started confirmation, we're using the material that comes from the Grow Ministries group in South Australia, uh, which is a Lutheran Church of Australia um, department. That's the one causing the problem. Thanks, Megan. We began with First Communion. I moved that to the start of Confirmation um, for various reasons. And so seven of these young people were having First Communion. And uh, the week after that, we started with the rest of our Confirmation instruction. And Charlie brought a friend along. And Ben came and sat in on our first lesson. And then he, he joined our youth group at about that time and hasn't really missed a Confirmation session since. And after a few months, Ben came to us and said, not knowing the background of this material, not being brought up in the church, Ben said, I believe and I'd like to be confirmed too. And so that started off a great process for us where we talked through, well, that happens through holy baptism and then uh, we're going to have you coming to communion as well and we couldn't work out when to do that, what would be the best time and we thought, what better time than today 
on the day of, uh, that he is confirmed that he be baptised as well. So Cameron's got the mic, over to you. Okay, thanks, Carl. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The word of God teaches that when people are baptised, God, our Heavenly Father, adopts them as his children. And I'll hand over to Kirstine for a presentation. Since Ben has been taught the word of God and been prepared for holy baptism, I now present him to be baptised. Ben, receive the mark of the Holy Cross as a sign that Christ the Crucified has redeemed you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you that you led your people through the Red Sea, out of slavery, into the Promised Land, and that in the waters of the Jordan your son was baptised by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Send down your Holy Spirit on Ben so that his sins may be washed away in the waters of baptism. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ben, receive the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, who says, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born through water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. Let us ask the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ on Ben and pray together the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is just so people can hear your answer. Ben, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Then say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Ben, do you believe in the triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? Then say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Ben, do you want to be baptised? If so, say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, you can give that to you, Christine. <laughs> Excellent. That's a good one. We'll put your head over the water. So lean down so your head's over the water. Ben, James, Maddock, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth by water in the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his Spirit so that you receive eternal life. Amen. Yeah, what a good time to clap, yeah. Now you can blow that out, it's okay. The, <laughs> the firefighter in me keeps saying blow that out. <laughs> Kirstine. Now we're going to pray for Ben. Almighty Father, as you have set Ben free from the power of sin and Satan through the sacrament of baptism, nourish him with the body and blood of your son so that he may daily fight the good fight and keep the faith 
and win the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, members of St. Mark's congregation, receive Ben, whom God has given to us as our brother in Christ. Pray for him and be a good example to him. We can love you. As a congregation, we usually give uh, a gift. Someone who's baptised, and we can't really give Ben what we normally give, which is a little chest with a little stuffed lamb in it, you know, a little um, plush toy, and uh, my first Bible, and that sort of thing. So we have another special gift for Ben today. There you go. We're going to move from here straight into the rite of confirmation. Matthew, Dylan, Charlie, Will, Ben... Rachel, Laura and Emma. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways, then say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do you believe in the triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? And for the answer to this, it's our tradition for us all to stand as a congregation, please, as we confess the baptismal faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's up there if you need it. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. The congregation may be seated. Since you are all God's children through holy baptism, do you intend to listen to the preaching of God's word and to receive the supper of our Lord if so, say, yes I, do. yes, I do. Do you intend to remain faithful to the teaching of the Lutheran Church as you have learnt it from Martin Luther's small catechism? Then say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm going to ask all of you to kneel on this step. On the step. Put both knees on the step. We practiced this. <laughs> there you go. We're going to start over here. And we may the Father in heaven for Jesus' sake renew in you the gift of the Holy Spirit for strength in faith, growth in love, patience in suffering and the hope of eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Cameron's going to greet you with your confirmation verse. Emma, I greet you with words from Proverbs 31 verses 25 to 26. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Congratulations, Emma. And you stay standing right there. <laughs> Laura, may God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth through holy baptism and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his spirit so that you receive eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Laura, I greet you with words from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all, these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Congratulations, Lord.
Rachel, may God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, sound judgment and strength, knowledge, holiness and reverence for the Lord. Amen. Please stand. Rachel, your verse comes from Philippians 1, chapter, um, verse 9 to 11. And I pray this, that your love will keep on growing in knowledge and every kind of discernment, so that you can prove the things that are superior and can be pure and blameless in the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise to God. And may God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, fill you with all joy, peace and hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. Ben, your verse comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Will may God the Father who has called you to his eternal glory in Jesus Christ restore, support and protect you by his Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. Will, your verse comes from Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 to 31. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Charlie, may Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, keep you holy and blameless until the day of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. Charlie, I greet you with the words from Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Dylan, may our risen Lord Jesus fill you with all joy as he calls you to serve him in your life of faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. Dylan, I greet you with the words from Ephesians chapter 2, 8 to 9. For it is, great, it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this not for your, from yourselves, it is from the, a gift from God, not by works so that no one can boast. Matthew, may our Lord Jesus Christ, risen in glory, grow in you always, as you are transformed from glory into glory by the power of his spirit. Amen. Please stand. Maddie, I, I greet with you with the words from Proverbs verse four, uh, four, chapter 4, verse 20 to 23. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is a wellspring of life. I'm just going to ask Amy quickly to explain uh, what the gifts are that we are giving as a congregation to the Confirmees. So we decided that um, we were going to give all the kids their own Bibles um, because every week when they come to confirmation, I don't see a single Bible that gets brought. So we decided <laughs> that it would be a great gift for them to treasure um, as they go on their faith journey. All right. Um, 
It is my honour to be able to confirm you in your faith as your pastor, but I thought I might um, get a bit of help in doing this, and I've asked my pastor uh, to help in your confirmation day. So uh, we're going to look to the screen in a moment, and there's a message from the Bishop of the Lutheran Church of Australia, Queensland District, for your confirmation. Hello, everyone. At St. Mark's Dolby, I'm Mark Weinecke, and I have the special joy to be a servant of the servants of God, that would be you, amongst our Lutheran churches here in Queensland. And I also have the special joy this Sunday morning greeting you, the dear saints of St. Mark's, and to celebrate with you on this very, very special Pentecost Sunday. It's a special day for you today, and especially for you, Charlie, Will, Laura, Matthew, Emma, Dylan, Ben and Rachel, as you affirm your baptism and your commitment to partake more fully in the life and mission of the Church. While you make this affirmation and confirmation, remember that most importantly, God is amongst you this morning affirming you. Always remember this, God does not make rubbish. You are his child, he loves you dearly, and God is lavish with his love. And Pastor Joel has told me about Ben's special day. Ben, today you will be baptised, admitted to the sacrament of the altar, and you also affirm your baptism in the rite of confirmation together with the other confirmees. I'm sure of one thing, Ben, you will remember this day for the rest of your life. It will give you strength when times are tough, and it will deepen your joy when times are good. And now, Charlie, Will, Laura, Matthew, Emma, Dylan, Ben and Rachel. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favour and give you his peace now and in the coming days as you walk with your Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for making your Son, Jesus Christ, known to us through your word. Nourish these people through your Holy Spirit so that their faith in you and their love for others may produce a rich harvest throughout their life. Give them courage to resist the devil, fight the good fight and keep the faith so that they may receive the crown of victory and reign with Christ. Amen. Newly confirmed members of St. Mark's congregation, the Holy Spirit has prepared you to assume greater responsibility in the life and work of the church. Serve your Lord faithfully as he calls you to work for him. Ben, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I now admit you to the sacrament of the altar and invite you to receive the body and blood of our Lord with joy and thanksgiving. This is the embarrassing bit. <laughs> Members of St Mark's congregation, you have heard these people publicly confess the faith. Remember them in your prayers, encourage them to serve our Lord and rejoice with them as they hear the word of God and receive the body and blood of Christ together with you. Set them a good example so that they may live as God's people and finally reach their heavenly home. Please signal your willingness to do this with your applause. Me one last time. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You can return at this point back to sit with your families if there's room for you where they are sitting. Oh, apart from the ones that are doing the reading, because this is the bit you haven't been looking forward to. Many of you in the life who uh, have spent much time in the church will know how difficult the Pentecost Sunday reading is. There's all sorts of names from all over the world. And our confirmees are going to do the readings today. 
So let's hear our readings from God's Word. The first reading comes from Acts two, oh, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be the tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there was staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came, <coughs> sorry, came together in bewilderment because each one heard this, their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then <coughs> how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians... Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, some however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit to all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams. Even my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 17. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you, you receive does not make you saved, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you, you received brought about your Father to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs of Christ. If indeed we share his sufferings, in order that we may also share his glory. Uh, this is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe in the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. 
The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Let's stay standing. Got you, just in time. Got to be quick. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for the sermon is from our gospel lesson from John chapter 14. And I'll read again a few verses from the end. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Let's pray. Lord, make us holy in your truth, for this your word is truth and life. Amen. Now you may be seated. As a student of history and someone who tries to understand what's going on in the world today, I think our whole worldview has moved from what we call collectivism to radical individualism. Let me explain. We've moved from the the need or even the want to play a minor part in a bigger society to the view that society and pretty much everything else should revolve around us. In other words, we think not so much in terms of us as me. So our common worldview these days is that, frankly, I'm not so much interested in you, I'm far more interested in myself. And you've seen this transition take place a lot more, a lot quicker in the last 30 years or so. But it was moving before that. The first half, and this might be news to some of the younger people here, but the first half of the 20th century was inhabited by this strange race of people which, imagine this, had such bizarre concepts as sacrifice and going without for the good of other people. I know, right? They saw virtue in ignoring their individuality in order to serve a higher cause. In fact, so deluded by modern standards were some of these early 20th century people that during the Great Depression, many people actually took pride in not going on the sustenance or welfare payments which were reserved for the destitute. And you can still hear it at times. I've still noticed it in some people when faced with or having gone through natural disasters or that sort of thing, are offered help and say, You might have heard it before, hey, there's people worse off than me, give it to them. So you still hear it a little bit, but most of the time, it's a different story. And it's not just among younger people, I'm not just saying it's a younger, older thing, but if you're not claiming everything you're entitled to these days, and more, it seems, you're seen as a bit of a loser. And I have friends that work in emergency management, and the amount of people who try to claim money which is there to help people who've been through natural disasters, who actually, the amount of people who haven't been through them, actually try to claim it, is very saddening. An attitude today seems to have a little bit of a a disconnect, that we think we're entitled to a standard of living that has very little to do with how hard we work. And there's other aspects of coming to it. We now have smaller families, One or two children demand more attention and standard of living than do eight or nine children. And you need to explain to a few young people today what the term hand-me-downs means. Or I think a lot of us could say we knew very well about hand-me-downs when we were growing up. So in from a church point of view, we now need to minister to generations of people in, uh, in society in which every single one thinks that they're somehow special. Now, don't get me wrong, we are all special in the eyes of God, but not more special than anyone else. We minister to people who think that their view is more important than the view of anyone around them. And we could, you're never supposed to talk about politics, but let's go there. 
Politicians now go into elections of promises of what you as an individual are going to get. doesn't matter what it costs anyone else. Can you imagine how they would be destroyed if they went into an election promising that, hey, you're probably going to get less, you might have to give something up so that the nation might be better off as a whole. In fact, I think one of the most famous political speeches in history has now been relegated to the position of a joke by modern society. And can you imagine now any politician going into an election saying, ask, remember this one, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country? They would be laughed out of politics. We've moved a long way post baby boomer, generation X, millennial, and whatever all the other letters are that I can't remember, from what they called the greatest generation and then the silent generation who came after them. And it's easy to sit and rage sometimes inside the church about all those, what's wrong with all of society out there, but we are part of society, aren't we? And the harder bit is recognising that we've done exactly the same thing in the church. It's time to look at ourselves and that's more difficult. And that is why the title of the sermon today was Who Do You Think You Are? Because it is on this one little word, you, that so much rests. Those verses I read to you from verses 13 to 15, I'd like to read them again and I'd like you to count the amount of times the word you appears. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. How'd we go? Nine times. Reading that, it is really tempting to think that it is all about you, isn't it? The problem we have, though, is that it's not. It's not about any of us. This is one of the problems we have with the English language. The word you is the same whether it's singular or plural. And I suppose that's why in Southern America you might have people say, y'all... Or around here, we might have people say, use. (laughs) What they're trying to say is, all of you, all of you, all of you. Every one of the times that the word you appears in those verses, it is in the plural form. Not talking to an individual. Yes, Philip asked Jesus, show us the Father, but then Jesus spoke to Philip and the rest of the disciples. And this was meant for all of them and then all of us who would come after. It should perhaps, and it would be a bit clumsy, but it should perhaps be in English a bit more like this. And I will do whatever all of you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. All of you may ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. And so it goes. If you all love me, keep my commands. You all, whatever you want to say. We as Christians have done in our understanding, and maybe it's our language, maybe it's a problem with that, what just about everyone else in society has done, we've made it about me, and it's not. Well, it is, but it's not just about me. It's what we call the difference between personal faith and private faith. Our faith is always personal, but it's never private. It's always lived out in community. It's always lived out not as you, but as us. And I didn't look up exactly where the quote was from, I apologise. But there's one uh, story I heard of someone coming to, uh, I think it was Charles Wesley, and saying that they had discovered the faith, they'd come to believe. And he turned and said to them, well, you'd either better find some other believers or make some, because the Bible knows nothing of solitary religion. What a great statement. The Bible knows nothing of solitary religion. We have a personal faith. It is important that we believe. The Holy Spirit who we're celebrating today comes and gives us the ability to believe in Jesus. who gives us access to the Father, a beautiful thing. But we don't live that out alone. And I'd go so far to say as we pretty much can't live that out alone. It's so difficult to do unless we are around other people. 
It is about us. And when I say us, I don't mean St Mark's. And I don't mean our confirmation class. That's a small group, which is part of a bigger group. And as I've done before, we can keep going. We can go from our congregation to our ministry area that we're part of and our parish that we're part of and our Lutheran Church of Australia, Queensland District that we meet in Synod with next weekend, which is part of the Lutheran Church of Australia in New Zealand, which is part of all the Christian churches on earth at this point in history. And bigger than that, we're part of a body that's all the Christians who've ever been and all the ones who ever will be. It's not just about us. It's not just about me. We are part of something so much bigger. We sing, yes, Jesus loves me. But Jesus loves, I won't say you, you all. <laughs> and I can pick on anyone here, but I'll just look at the ones who are sitting in front of me and say, for, thank God that John 3.16 does not say, for God so loved Murray that he sent his only son. Also, for God so loved Ken that he sent his only son. But that's God so loved the world. So on Pentecost Sunday, the spirit of truth came and this idea of everyone speaking in different languages was, I think, a sign to show that this was to the whole world. The spirit came to the whole world. And this changes so many of the ways that we look at so many of the passages to do with our faith and changes the way we live it out. There are some individual passages in Scripture that stem from a personal faith. We can think of Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd. It's true. It came from David who had this really close understanding of who God was to him. But there are also ones that we read like that that were never supposed to be taken that way. and You have to understand the original form. Some of you may know the verse, or the verses from Jeremiah 29 verses 11 to 13. And you know them when you hear them. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a few... Are you counting the U's in this one? We're up to four. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And we share this with people when they are in need and doubt and hard times. Talking about God's love, God's love for them. But we also have to realise that this wasn't written to an individual. This was written to Israel when they were in exile. It was written, this was when God says, I know the plans I have for you. He's talking to a whole nation. Each and every one of you is special and important in God's sight. And that's really important that we know that. Each one of you is special and important in God's sight. But it is dangerous if that is all we see. Pentecost Sunday tells us of a very special relationship, a loving interplay between Father, Son and Holy Spirit, three but one, without equal but never alone. And we too are never alone as Christians, or we were never supposed to be. Drawn into that interrelationship of love in the life of God, we're also drawn into a body and we serve together. We are part of something ancient and huge and mysterious and we all have a part to play. I'm reading a book on leadership at the moment. It's got a really interesting statement in it. I might have shared it with some of you before. It says, the church of God does not have a mission. The mission of God has a church. In other words, God has seen fit to accomplish his mission in a certain way and that's by drawing us into bodies of faith. We call them congregations. Or literally in Greek it means the ones called out. God calls us out to be in a group together. So it is these place, imperfect places filled with imperfect people where God fulfills his mission to the world. So let's be who we are. And I can't look at them here because they've spread out into all their families, but our confirmees today too. Remember to be who you are and that is to see yourself as a part of his bigger church. So we live together, we serve together, we pray together so that others from this lonely individualistic world may be drawn into the love that we know. And as I finish with the blessing, we'll hear this in the way that it was meant. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all. His church, His people. Amen.
And may the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, keep our hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's serve God as we respond to his word in song. We're going to sing the song Dream Small. One very concrete way in which we fulfill our small part of a larger church um, is that we give our offerings for the work of the church and uh, we give a certain amount to the Queensland district and that some of that goes to the general church and we're part of a bigger body. Um, when we bring our offerings of finances, it's been a bit harder to do that since COVID. Uh, we don't pass a plate around for everyone to touch. It wouldn't be the most hygienic way of doing things. Um, so most of us now support our church online. Uh, with online giving. If any of you did bring any offerings today which you'd like to give, there will be a, um, an offering bag in the vestry on the way out on a little stand on the table, um, but it was there beforehand as well. And so some of our offerings are going to be forward, brought forward now. 
um, just as a symbol for the rest of them as we pray together our offering prayer. And Charlie's going to come up and put them on the altar. So let's pray. Holy God, bless these gifts and bless us as we offer ourselves to serve you in different ways. Send your spirit upon us so that when we speak the word of your love, people may hear and understand it. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And who's going to do the prayer of the church? Some of our confirmation. Laura's going to do the prayer of the church. And Charlie, you brought reinforcements. Great. We pray together the prayer of the church. The usual response, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we celebrate the dwelling of your Holy Spirit, which you sent upon the believers on the day of Pentecost, and which our blessing today. Let us pray for all he has done for us. Lord, we thank you for the transforming work your, oh, your Holy Spirit in our lives and through our lives to the wider community. As we spread your word, Lord, in our mercy, yeah. we thank you that you have, you have given us boldness to proclaim the gospel. Remind, remind us to use your power to do the work you have given us. Thank you for working in our working in our lives. Guide us into your salvation. Renew your our dead spirit and open our eyes to the to the your truth. In Lord, in your mercy. Help us to see more clearly, to recognise your movement in our lives. Make us more sensitive to you so we can follow you more closely. Still we know that still we know that we are selfish and rebellious. Please forgive us when we turn away from you and bring us back to your salvation. Help us to be obedient when we recognise you leading us toward your will. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you for your help and comfort today, as you know our pain and anxieties. We think of those who have lost someone close to them, in particular the shootings overseas recently. Please comfort each family and friends who are struggling with the loss of a loved one. And we now, and we now silently pray for those who we know are struggling as well in our hearts. Please send your Holy Spirit to comfort them during these different times. Help them know you help them know your rest, peace and comfort today. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to walk with you, Holy Spirit. Grow good fruit in us, you as you are the one who produces these in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness and self-control. We cannot live without these things on our own. We need God and your Holy Spirit. Please be with us today and keep us safe. We pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we come to this meal, open our hands and hearts. Ready to receive all that Jesus gives. We come to this meal needing grace, trusting that Jesus will bless us with grace, forgiveness and peace. And let's pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Now, today as we come to Holy Communion, for all of our guests' sake with us, and we have so many guests, it's wonderful. We practice continuous communion with individual cups. We begin on the outside um, of, we come down the outside aisle, beginning from the front. uh, And then as we return back to our seats, hopefully we do that without having to cross over everyone else. That's the best way we've found to do it. Um, There are gluten-free wafers for those who require them. Please just indicate to the server if you require a gluten-free wafer. We have individual communion cups. They will be on the tables here. Uh, There'll be one bin under each table and the, the... Empty cups just go in the bins here provided. If you would like, if it is your practice to practice intinction, which is the dipping of the bread into the cup rather than drinking the wine, um, we found it easiest to break the wafer in half so it'll fit in the cup and to do that in the individual cup. And then we don't throw the cup with the wine still in it into the bin. There'll be some small um, receptacles on the tables as well. I think that's about it. There'll be some songs that are sung during Holy Communion. You're please welcome to join in singing of those. The words will be on the screen. Is there kids on today? I don't think there is today, is there? No, because with so many people involved in the confirmation, we wouldn't have any teachers and stuff. All right, so please also bring children with you for a blessing, bring uh, the whole family. With these things said, I believe that's all the announcements we have to make. So come and receive the body and blood of our Lord, this bread and wine.
Please stand for our dismissal and thanks. And may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life eternal. Go in peace. Amen. And we pray together. Holy Father, as we have eaten of the one bread and drunk from the one cup, keep your whole church harmoniously together in faith and love united by the one spirit. Amen. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. We go giving thanks to God. Hallelujah. The blessing of God, creator, redeemer and sustainer, be upon you and within you this day and every day. Amen. Our last song, it's our tradition here to remain standing for our last song. It's also, it's a prayer of peace. Um, it's also very much a blessing and we can sing this as our blessing to each other and especially think of the confirmees today as our blessing to them.